This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Glory be to God. Welcome to day three of Prophetic Insight. And the Spirit of God wants to lead you in this season. And one of the ways the Spirit is going to lead you is through the written Word of God. So to have it sharing with us on the ways of the Spirit, the ways of the Spirit. There is God's ways of doing things. The way God does his things is not the way most men expect him to do things. But as we can have a revelation of what he can do. I said it is important to read God's word as we can have revelation of what God can do or what we can expect him to do. You know, someone said God can do anything. The truth of it is that God cannot do anything. God can only do things that are consistent with his person, his nature, and his character. God does not do things outside of his character. So when you say God can do anything, you have to put it in the context of his will. God will do things that are consistent with his will. The written word of God gives us a picture of what to expect whenever God is doing something. He does not do things that violate the integrity of his word. God's operation system is directly related to the finished work of Jesus in this dispensation. God's operational system is directly related to the finished work of Jesus. You know, if you want to know how God is going to behave, how God is going to function, how God is going to act, can you look at the finished work of Jesus? So the revelation of the finished work of Jesus is the operating manual of God. That is the operating manual of God. The revelation knowledge of the finished work of Jesus is the operating manual of God. I want to say this again. I said the revelation knowledge of Jesus, the revelation knowledge of the finished work of Jesus, the revelation knowledge of the finished work of Jesus is God's operating manual in this dispensation, that is his operating manual. The revelation knowledge of the finished work of Jesus is God's operating manual in this dispensation. Is God's operating manual. So if you want to know what God can do or what God cannot do, you look at the finished work of Jesus. This is why we need to have a consistent revelation of the finished work of Jesus. And what would that revelation do for us? It puts us in a position where we can respond to the leadership of the Spirit. The revelation knowledge of the finished work of Jesus puts us in the position where we can respond to the leading of the Spirit. You see, if I don't have the revelation of the finished work, what Jesus has done for me, and what I have in Christ, and what I can do with the Christ in me. Now, let's look at this three dimension. Who we are in Christ is important. What we have in Christ is important. And what we can do with the Christ in us. I believe that these are the three foundations when it comes to operating in the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. Who we are in Christ. What we have in Christ. And what we can do with the Christ in us. This is the foundation for operating the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. You see, the strength of the enemy is in the area where you're ignorant of God's word. The strength of the enemy is in the area where you're ignorant of the word of God. 
If you are ignorant of God's word, it will be impossible for you to flow in the direction of the Spirit. When you're ignorant of God's word, you can't flow in the direction of the Spirit. This morning I was having a good time with the Holy Ghost. Then I read this scripture in Isaiah 11. And in Isaiah 11, I want to read from verse 2. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3, it said, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. He is talking about Jesus. This is a prophetic word that has to do with Jesus. Isaiah the prophet began to understand that something was going to happen. He said, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. One of the assignments of a prophet is to declare the future. I said, one of the assignments of a prophet is to declare the future. Also, one of the assignments of prophetic people is to understand the future. You understand the future by the leading of the Spirit. I like that. I said, you understand the future by the leading of the Spirit. You understand the future. If you want to know how your future is going to look like, depend on the leadership of the Spirit, and He's going to show you what to do. He's going to show you how to function. you got to depend on the leadership of the Spirit. Now, watch this. I want to read this scripture from uh, uh, Isaiah 11 from verse 1. He said, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. This is a prophetic word. This is a prophetic word that shall come forth. A rod that shall come forth. It hasn't come. This is word of wisdom. Word of wisdom is a prophetic word of what has not happened. Word of wisdom is a prophetic word of what has not happened what is about to happen? What a wisdom is a prophetic word of what has not happened. It doesn't happen. So Isaiah the prophet had the word of wisdom by the Spirit of God. And he said, And there shall come forth a root, sorry, that shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Why is the Spirit going to rest upon him? Because he was a man. The Spirit is going to rest upon him. It is after the death and the resurrection of Jesus that the Spirit starts dwelling in people. So Isaiah the prophet began to speak that the spirit will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. He said, this is the foundation for the ways of the spirit. The spirit of wisdom. You know, Paul began to write in Ephesians chapter 1, when he said in Ephesians chapter 1, if you read from verse 17 and 18, he said, The Father of glory, that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. When you go to church, look for a church that has spirit of wisdom and revelation where the word is taught. You need the word to sustain your faith work. Church is not just a place where we clap our hands and give our offering and tithe and walk away. It should be a place where people receive revelation for empowering their faith to be able to function in the will of God. Without revelation knowledge, your faith work won't be effective. You need revelation knowledge of the will of God for you to be effective in your faith work. You need revelation knowledge. You see, you know, when you hear some people talk, you know, they don't, they are not rooted in God's word. Their confession is always in opposition to the truth of God's word. And you can tell if the spirit of faith is in operation in your life. You can tell if this guy or this woman is manifesting the spirit of faith. How do you know someone that has the spirit of faith is at work in their life? Is that their way of thinking and doing things will be based on the will of God will be based on the word of God. So Isaiah here got the prophetic word about Jesus. And can I say this to you? The ways of the spirit is rooted in the word of God. If you write in, write that down. I'd like you to think about that. The 
Glory to God. The ways of the Spirit is rooted in the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. That's the right way to say it. The ways of the Spirit is rooted in the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. The ways of the Spirit is rooted in the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. The ways of the Spirit is rooted in the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. The ways of the Spirit is rooted in the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. You see, if I have the revelation of the finished work, and this revelation is moving from one dimension to another, it is easy for me to flow with the Holy Ghost. It is easy for you to flow with the Spirit if you're receiving a consistent revelation of the finished work of Jesus. That revelation will change your perspective. Come on. That revelation will help you see things from the direction of the will of God. That revelation puts you in a position where you see possibilities and no limitation. That revelation becomes the source of inspiration and wisdom. The revelation of the finished work of Jesus puts you in a position where you unlock supernatural rest. Where you unlock supernatural strength. You know somebody's looking for strength. Oh my God, I'm weak spiritually. Oh, I'm weak spiritually. No, all you need is just go to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. Begin to read Ephesians with expectation. I was sharing yesterday. I said something to some folks. I said, uh, you know, we said I want, we use words like this in church or among Christians. I want to have my quiet time. I want to have devotion. It is good, but why not say I want to have visitation? Why not say I want to have an encounter? When you want to read your Bible, imagine yourself saying, I'm about to have an encounter with God as I read this Bible. I'm about to have visitations from God as I read the Word. You know, we use the word devotion. Oh, it's good. But when we use the word encounter, when we use the word visitation, I'm about to experience the demonstration of the Spirit. Come on, come on. Those are the kind of thoughts you should be carrying right now. That anytime you want to read your Bible, and it's I'm about to have visitations of the Spirit. I'm about to have the release of the Spirit. Come on. This is this this words that create an atmosphere of quickening. The, the, you can have an atmosphere of quickening. I'm about to experience light from heaven. Ooh, I'm about to receive light from heaven. I'm about to read the word. I'm about to receive rhema. I'm about to receive revelation. I'm about to have insight. I'm about to experience the release of the spirit. Don't approach your Bible like a history book. And stop approaching the Bible like a religious book. That is why it's not doing too much for some people. Oh, let me just read the Bible. Let me just read the Bible. Let me, oh, let me just read the Bible. If I, let me just read the Bible. Oh, my God, that's too dull for me. Let me just read the Bible. Let me think, oh, 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 oh my God, let me just read the Bible. Oh, why, why not say, let me just have an encounter with God? Let me just have a visitation of the Spirit. Come on. Why not say, I'm about to experience the release of the Spirit. Come on. I'm about to have manifestation of the Holy Ghost right now. I'm about to receive prophetic word that will empower my thinking. I'm about to receive inspiration that will stir up the unction in me for me to have the flow of the Holy Ghost. Why not talk like that? Think about talking like that. That should be your new way of talking anytime you carry the Bible. I'm about to have an encounter. I'm about to receive a word from God. I'm about to be quickened in my spirit right now. Something is about to happen. As I take this word of God, begin to read it, my eyes of understanding will be enlightened. The spirit of wisdom and revelation will be in operation. You see, this is how you put yourself in spiritual mood. You can put yourself in the spiritual mood. People, uh, sorry to say this, you know, in the natural people who are, uh, you know, let's take for instance, uh, an unbeliever can be this one believer and say, I'm in the mood to have sex. I'm in the mood. They tell you they're in the mood to have sex. Man, you can be in the mood to experience the Holy Ghost. 
You can be in the mood to have the power of God. You can be in the mood to have some encounter. This is the kind of mentality I want you to have from this day forward. Whenever you pick up the Bible, don't think you're about to read history. Believe you're about to read God. <laughs> don't think you're about to read history of synoptic gospel oh that is another name again synoptic gospel old testament new testament come on somebody i'm about to have a visitation <laughs> i'm about to have an encounter now you see when you approach your word your bible that way there is this hunger in your spirit to fellowship there is this drive in your spirit to make Meditate now. I, I want to meditate on Revelation. I want to meditate on Rema World. I want to meditate on the insights from the Holy Ghost. Do you know why a lot of people are still weak spiritually after being Christian for 40 years? They are approaching this book like a religious book. They read it like story. It's the story for them. Oh, it was Paul's writing. Let's go beyond it. It's Paul writing and say, God was talking to me through Paul. God is speaking to me right now. God is talking to me right now. Remove all the clauses that will make you look at this book like a religious book. That is how to benefit from it. All those clauses, thank you, Holy Ghost, that will make you look at this book. Oh, this is just an old Bible, an old book. No, it's not an old book. It's God that is talking to me right now. God is talking to me right now. Look at this. God is speaking to me right now. Look at this. This is what God is saying now. This is what God is saying now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Stop approaching it like a religious book. I don't know why I'm saying this. A lot of God's people are not getting so much out of his word because they just see it as a religious book. Oh, let me do it as they will not say, I'm not reading my word. No, no, no. That is not the kind of attitude we should have towards the Bible. Whenever you want to read this book, have an expectation that God is about to release something into your spirit. Have an expectation that something is about to change. Your orientation is about to change. Your mentality is about to change. Your perspective is about to change. You're about to unlock supernatural inspiration that will put you in the direction of the will of God. This is not just a history book. This is a place for encounter. This is a place for visitation. This is a place where you have the release of the spirit. This is why you cannot speed read this book. One of the advice not to read this book, that don't speed read this book. It's not something you speed read. Don't try to say, oh, I've covered this place. I've covered this place. I've covered. It's not about covering it. It's whether it's covering you. It's not about covering it. Oh, oh, I've covered the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's good to cover it. But friend, the most important thing is to have visitations. It's to have visitations. It's to have encounters. It's for your spirit to be fed with the word. It's for you to receive uncommon insight, prophetic wisdom, prophetic understanding, prophetic insight as you read. Those are the things you should be looking at for. It's not just a religious book. You just need to be on fire all the time you come into this book. Something amazing needs to bet in your spirit there has to be a release this is why you'll be on fire 24 7 every day you're moving on this fire of god you're praying in the spirit you're reading the word life is entering you this is why you cannot be depressed anymore this is the cure for depression telling you make this place a place of visitation i'm about to have the visitation i'm about to receive revelation i'm about to receive an encounter i'm about to receive the wisdom of god the wisdom of god is on all these pages as we read through this place we're encountering the wisdom of god we're encountering the wisdom of god this is the mentality you have to project this is the wisdom of God in demonstration. This is the anointing in the written words. The power. This word is so anointed. Oh, thank you, Father. You know, when I read that scripture this morning, and I decided to take communion on it, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. God is correcting someone this morning. You are not going to read it like a normal book anymore. The story has changed. Hallelujah. From this day forward, you're going to get so much out of this book. I'm telling you, you're, you're, whenever you carry it, you're carrying the voice of God. Woo! I'm carrying the voice of God documented. I'm carrying progressive revelation documented. 
I'm carrying the wisdom of God documented. I'm carrying life documented. I'm carrying the manual for operating my economy. Come on. I'm carrying revelation of the will of God. I'm carrying the content of the purposes of God for my life and for my generation. This is the kind of mentality that leads to uncommon demonstration of the Spirit. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse, verse 2 said, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Oh, and someone said, Pastor, so how will this scripture profit me? It's a prophetic word for Jesus, but it has become my rhema for today. <laughs> it's a prophetic word for Jesus. It has become my rhema for today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is within me. Come on. That's what you're supposed to be seeing when you read scriptures like this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is within me. If the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, the ability to have the demonstration of the Spirit will be in operation. The ability to break limitation is already released. The ability to subdue giants is already upon you. You see, this is the kind of mentality that puts you in a position where you release the spirit of faith. That is the mentality. That is the kind of thinking you should be having right now. Nothing can be impossible to me. With God, all things are possible. You begin to prophesy to that business. This business is growing and it's not stopping. I'm partnering with El Shaddai. El Shaddai is my source. God is my bank. He will make a way for me. You begin to speak the word of God. Can I say this to you? I was so blessed this morning. There was this message we will preach. I think it's in 2018, I saw it on Facebook and I, I, I listened to it and I was blessed. So I decided to share it with some people. Maybe if you go to your page, you may see me uh, share it on your inbox. It's on how to speak the word of God over the atmosphere of your life. Man, I was fired up this morning. As I listened to that and I said, Jesus, I need to share this with people. How to speak the word of God over the atmosphere of your life. You know, can I say this? To you the anointing is in the word and when you start speaking the word you are saturating the atmosphere with the anointing and because you're saturating the atmosphere with the anointing nothing can be impossible to you whenever you start speaking the word of god you are saturating the atmosphere whether it's in your business places in your families in your marriage it's in your job when you start speaking the word of god you are saturating the atmosphere with the anointing you you are saturating the atmosphere with the nature of god with the presence of god with the help of the spirit and this is why you cannot be depressed this is why you cannot be frustrated. This is why your rising will know no limitation. This is why you are going to break free from any form of rejection, frustration, in the internal dialogue that is toxic to your vision, to your purpose and expectation as you begin to have an atmosphere that is saturated with the anointing. So this scripture said, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. I like this. But he said, the spirit of counsel and might. I like this. This is what you, you should be breaking bread on in this season. When you read this scripture, say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of wisdom is upon me. Understanding is upon me. The spirit of counsel, counsel, counsel will destroy foolishness. Cancel will destroy foolishness. Cancel will ruin foolish behavior. I'm telling you, that is why you need the spirit of cancel. It's a, and cancel and might. There are things you've been trying to do 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. The spirit of might will help you to break forth. Come on. The spirit of might, when it's in operation, miracles begin to happen. This is the realm where you see the miraculous when the spirit of might is in operation. The spirit of might is in operation. Operation. The spirit of might is in operation. Hallelujah. The spirit of might is in operation. This is why David took glad out. It was the spirit of might. It was so heavy that when he stood before Goliath, he saw the end result before he started his conversation with him. 
That is what that spirit will do for you. When the spirit of might is in operation, you will see the end of the storm, you will see the end of the giant before you start the conversation with the giant. And here we saw the spirit of might, and it said the spirit of knowledge. Oh my God, the spirit of knowledge. See, if you want to be a prophetic person, you need to live from this scripture. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How many of you want to be a prophetic person? You want to hear, you want to see, you want to know, you want your hearing to increase, you want your seeing to increase, you want to be seeing visions, you want to be hearing from God, you want to be detailed in the spirit, you want to know the will of God, the purpose of God, you want to be able to see the future before it comes. This scripture got to be a way of thinking. The spirit of the Lord is upon him, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. When the spirit rests upon you, look at the distribution of the spirit. Wow, man, I got something now. <laughs> when the spirit rests upon you, look at the distribution of the spirit. Number one, there will be words. The spirit of wisdom is coming from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Number two, the spirit of understanding will come. The spirit of counsel will come. The spirit of might will come. The spirit of knowledge will come. And of the fear of the Lord, when the Holy Ghost will rest upon you, when the Holy Ghost is within you, these are the distribution you're going to see. This is what you're going to be having. A lot of us are knowing to us that the spirit of might is upon us. But we're not seeing it yet because we have no revelation about it. Now receive revelation about the spirit of understanding that is in you. You have understanding. In Colossians 1 verse 9, Paul begin to talk about that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Let's go to that scripture. I think I'm going to come back to Isaiah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Colossians 1 verse 9. In Colossians 1 verse 9, he said this, watch this, he said, For this cause we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. That ye might be filled, come on, that ye might be filled with what? With the knowledge of his will, not with religion, not with the tradition of man. Oh my God. You know, some church folks are full of religion and the tradition of man. Oh, Oh, this person said this, that person said that. Listen, what is the word saying? I don't care what they said. What is the book saying? I don't care who, whatever anybody said, that's not important. What is important here, what rules here is the word of God. What is the word of God saying? Not this apostle said this, that apostle said that, that bishop said this, that bishop said this, this person said this. No, no. What is the word of God saying? Come on. Are you putting the word of God above the opinions of men or you're allowing the opinions of men to take the center stage of your life? What is your choice next morning? What are you making your reality this morning? Is it what people say or what the Holy Ghost is leading you in? So you got to settle to this. This is, this is not the year to run with opinion. This is the year to walk in revelation. Come on. Opinion won't take you far, but revelation knowledge will accelerate your vision. <laughs> opinion will not take you far, but revelation knowledge will accelerate your vision. This is not the year of opinion. You're looking for opinion all over the place. What do you think about this person? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? What do you think about, oh, my friend, go and get a word from the Holy Ghost. Fellowship with God, to hear from God, to know for yourself. Be led by the Spirit. He said, as many that are led by the Spirit, not as many that are asking questions. As many that are led by the Spirit, not as many that are asking questions, seeking for opinion and direction. No, you spend time with this word and look at what he said here. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. In, in Colossians 1 verse 9, says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. We do not cease to pray for you. Let's see the content of the prayer. Look at the content of the prayer. We do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. This is the foundation for making wise decisions. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. The knowledge of his will is the foundation for the ways of the Spirit. The knowledge of his will is the foundation for the ways of the spirit. The knowledge of his will. Let me say this to you, sisters and brothers. If you begin to believe God for the knowledge of his will, you start renewing your mind with the right word. 
It is not every message that puts you in a position of walking in dominion. Any message that brings in fear, anxiety, and frustration is not from God. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, for God have not given us the spirit of fear. A prophetic word does not project fear, it projects fear faith and direction. I said a prophetic word does not project fear. It projects faith and direction. It projects encouragement. You know, Paul was right when he said, uh, if you want to judge prophets in the New Testament, they said is that prophecy is for exaltation, for edification, and for comfort. And that is a parameter of New Testament prophecy. It is for exaltation. It is for edification. It is for comfort. So when a prophetic word comes, it should be able to comfort you. It should be able to bring exaltation. It should come with encouragement. Whenever you hear a prophetic word and you're devastated and frustrated, it's not the word of God. You have just heard from another spirit. The word of God will bring encouragement. The word of God will bring direction. The word of God will bring hope. The word of God will bring light. If you're depressed, if you come, light will come to you. If you're frustrated and the word come, inspiration will come to you. If you're going through confusion and the word of God come, you will receive direction. If you're struggling with your peace, if the word come, your peace will be established. I think this morning, God will have me say this to you. God said he loves you. Stop condemning yourself. This is a word for someone. You always like to condemn yourself. Condemning yourself doesn't make you righteous. Condemnation is a satanic expression. It is not the will of God for you to condemn yourself. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what has happened to you. Condemnation is not the will of God. Uh, stop condemning yourself is the major reason why you struggle from frustration, depression, and low self-esteem. You are a choosing generation. You are a royal priesthood. You need to believe in what God has made you to be. It is not about your performance. It's about the word of God. Why are you condemning yourself? Why are you shutting yourself down? Why do you have this opinion that nobody loves you? Who, who told you that? Why do you have this mentality that nobody loves you? Satan can easily say that crap to you because he wants you to think that way. He said, we, were, we are a chosen generation. Come on, that is the love of God in expression. For God so loved the world. He's talking about you. He's talking about you. For God so loved the world. Stop abusing yourself. God loves you. Don't use substance to abuse yourself or sex to abuse yourself. God loves you. Stop working in this mentality that nobody cares. Jesus did. More than 2,000 years ago, he did. Pick up the courage and celebrate yourself. Pick up the courage and believe that you have generational blessing upon you. You have generational blessing upon your life. Pick up the courage. He said there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you walk in the flesh, you will not enjoy the ways of the spirit. So the carnally minded is dead. Part of carnality is condemnation. Mm, that's a word for somebody here. Part of carnality is condemnation. Don't condemn yourself because Jesus died to end condemnation. Mm. I said, don't condemn yourself. He died. Jesus have died to end condemnation. Don't start it. Don't beat yourself. Don't make yourself look stupid. Don't say, I'm not faithful. I'm not committed. I'm going to fail again. Don't be using those kind of words. That is not who you are. That is not who you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are a partaker of the divine nature. God loves you and so do I and everyone on this broadcast. I love you by faith. We're going to love people by faith. Hallelujah. God loves you. You don't have to beat yourself down. It, let me say this to you. Just because your marriage is not working doesn't mean your life is not working. Mm. Well, I'll say a whole story for another day. Just because your marriage is not working doesn't mean your life is not working. Come on, man, let me say this to you. If one area of your life is not working, we're just about the other areas of your life that is working. Just because people look down on you and spite you doesn't mean that God has forgotten you. Those who spite you don't know your value. They don't, have, they don't have value for their life. That's why they do that to you. Those who despise you don't really know who you are. Let me say this to you. Do you think it's everybody that go to Mercedes and say, do, can you do me a message, a new brand of 2020? No. 
Is it what they do in your city? Is it everybody that goes to Mercedes and says, I want Mercedes 2020? No. People that go there are just few persons that go to Mercedes and tell them, well, I want my steering to be power steering. I want the chair here to be black. I want this to be brown. And that is what the Lord is going to do for a person this year. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> I want the seat to be brown. <laughs> I want this to be, you know, come on. It's not everybody that does. What's that? So if, if, if that, that simply means for those who do that know the value of what they are looking for. So I'm here this morning to say to you, God took his time to make you. You are beautiful. You are handsome, very male, and you are wonderfully made. Stop talking yourself down. God does not take pleasure in a home full of condemnation. He doesn't take pleasure. When you're beaten down, it is difficult for the Holy Ghost to fellowship with you. Mm. When you're beaten down, don't do that. And the Lord told me this morning to say this to you. If you want to be effective in the things of the spirit, learn to rejoice, even when you have no reason to. Hallelujah. Can somebody hear me right now? Can you hear me right now? Can you hear me right now? Can you hear me? He said, if, 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 can, I, can I say this to you? If, if you want to excel in the things of the spirit, learn to rejoice even when nobody is there to help you or to support you or to encourage you. And that is what I came with this morning. You are anointed. You are not ordinary. There is grace on you. There is an anointing on your life. Friend, believe me. I believe this word I'm sharing with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoicing is by faith. We don't rejoice because everything is in place. I'm telling you, I rejoice by faith. <laughs> I came to do this broadcast by faith. I preach the word of God by faith. So rejoicing is by faith. Expect your miracles by faith. Uh, speak the word of God by faith. Expect increase by faith. Uh, stop behaving as if you're the only person going through that financial challenge. A lot of people are going through financial challenge, but most people are not making it clear to others because they choose to make God their source. And because they're trusting God, God is helping them out of the whole situation. I'm here to say to you, if you're filled with the knowledge of his will, you'll be able to see into his will. You'll be able to see into his counsel. You'll be able to see into his purpose. And I'm here to say to you today, learn to trust God and lean not in on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And this is a word from God for you today. The ways of the spirit begins with the knowledge of the will of God. The ways of the Spirit. It begins with the knowledge of the will of God. The ways of the Spirit. God wants to use it this year, mightily. I'm telling you. God is going to use it to prophesy to people. God is going to use it to minister to people. God is going to use you to lay hands on people this year. God is going to use it to bring a blessing to so many people. But how will he do that if you're done emotionally? How will you do that when you don't believe in yourself? How will you do that when you don't believe it can use you? Let me say this to you. You are qualified for the move of the Spirit. You are qualified for the demonstration of the grace of God. And there is someone here, the Holy Ghost, who have me say this to you. Put yourself together. You are a mighty warrior for God. Put yourself together. You are a mighty warrior for God. Stop the tears and start the praise. Stop the worry and then start the jubilation. Come on. Stop the tears and start the praise. That's a rumor word for somebody right now. Stop the depression and go into expressing the goodness of God. Look for somebody to talk to. Look for somebody to share with. Look for someone to light up their day. Go and sow the seed of mercy, the seed of love, the seed of kindness. Look for somebody you can be a blessing to for today. Look for somebody that have a little need and look at him and said, I'm going to be a blessing to you today. I'm going to be a blessing. Relieve yourself from anxiety and depression. I don't know what I'm speaking to, but the Holy Ghost is talking to someone. Your best of days are not behind you. They're ahead of you. It is time to believe what God has said and make it your priority. It is time not to count your regret, but to remember the goodness of God. A lot of people sit down and begin to count their regret. That's the worst thing to do. Nothing drains like your energy, like sitting down and counting your regrets. 
Nothing drains you emotionally, mentally, physically, financially. When you begin to sit down and all you can do is to begin to regret of all the bad choices you have made 10 years ago, 25 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Friend, can we just put that behind and press towards the mark of the high calling? Everybody got a mistake in life. Everybody got a challenge. I've made some mistakes, but that's not my future. I've messed them some things up, but that's not my future. I've been angry about things that were not okay with me, but that's not my future. But I came here this morning to remind you there are things to put behind if you will hear from God. Don't be noisy inside of you. There are so many of us noises going on inside of us. So many noise. So many noises going on. Put those noises away. Lay aside every weight that easily that will easily beset you. Lay aside the weight, the weight of depression, the weight of anxiety, the weight of frustration. Lay aside the weight. I came this morning to say to you, God have anointed you to hear. God have anointed you to see. God have anointed you to speak. And God have anointed you to know. This is what you're going to do this morning. Rejoice, celebrate. One of the keys to unlocking prophetic insight is to live in the atmosphere of worship and praise. You'll be more sensitive to the will of God when you're in the atmosphere of worship and praise. Some morning, not all the morning, but some morning I woke up and I just put on a praise. A, a, a worship is just going on and I'm hearing the word of God and this worship is just coming. This worship is just coming and I'm hearing the word of God. That is what I do sometimes. I hear the word over and over and then I listen to this worship music and I just get my day going. Listen to this. If you can't your regret, it means you're not trusting God. Put it behind you. Put the mistake behind you. The scandal, put it behind you. The accusation, put it behind you. I don't care who call you, whatever they call you, but that's not who God called you. You are the blessed and not the cursed. You are the successful and not the failure. Don't, 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 don't project what men call you. Some may say you're a failure, you know, but that's not what God's word said. What God said, you're a chosen generation. You're a real priesthood. I came this morning to celebrate you. I came this morning to tell you that God is in you. God has tabernacled in you. And because God has tabernacled in you, you can walk with him, you can flow in power, and you can flow in the anointing. The ways of the Spirit is rooted in the revelation of the finished work of Jesus, and the progressive revelation of Jesus makes all the difference. And I'm here this morning to say to you, it is season for you to shine. The last word I will share then, I'll be done, is in Isaiah chapter 60, it's a prophetic word. When the prophet Isaiah came forth and he shared in Isaiah 60 verse 20, he said, Arise, shine, for the light is come. This is a word for someone this morning. Arise, arise, arise from your slumber. Arise from depression. Arise from frustration. Arise from toxic conversation. Arise from emotional damages, I'm telling you. Arise, see, believe in what God has done. Stop making your performance the final foundation of your acceptance. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't look at your performance and say, oh, I'm not consistent, or oh, I'm not stable, I'm not this, I'm not that. Be, be the prophet of your own life and prophesy I'm consistent, prophesy I'm committed, prophesy I'm faithful, prophesy I'm productive, prophesy I'm supporting. I like you to write it down on your diary if you're writing. Prophesy this every day. I am faithful. I'm telling you what to say to yourself this morning. You, you prophesy this, I am faithful, I am productive, I am effective. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I am faithful, I am productive, I am effective, I am committed, I am committed. I am reliable. I am reliable. I am, I, I am reliable. I am a contributing person. I am a contributing person. I am a loving person. Come on. I am a caring person. I am a contributing person. I'm a loving person. I'm a caring person. I am a reliable person. I am a person who supports. Come on. I am a person who supports. You got to say those words to yourself. I am a stable person. I am stable emotionally. Come on. Say that to yourself. I am stable mentally. Come on. Say that to yourself. I am stable mentally. I am stable financially. Financially, I am stable in my titan, in my 
offerings. I am stable. I am stable to partnership in the ministry. I am stable. I am stable in my marriage. I am stable in my marriage. I'm stable in the ministry. I am stable in pursuing heavenly vision. You got to say those things to yourself. You wake up, tell yourself that people love me. People love me. People want me. People want to celebrate me with me. Don't send words like people don't love me. Nobody wants to see me. That is how people treat me. Don't use those words around yourself. They are not flowers. Don't use them. Don't use them. They are not flowers. Don't use them. Words you're supposed to use, I'm attracting the right people. Come on. I'm attracting the right people. Quality people in my life. Wonderful people in my life. Say those things to yourself. I am a prophetic person. Come on. I'm a prophetic person. I hear from God and I declare the counsel of God. I'm a kingdom of God minded person. Say that to yourself. I am Christ minded. Say that to yourself. I am a Holy Ghost minded person. Say that to yourself. I am walking in the wisdom of God. Say that to yourself. I walk with team. I'm a team member. I'm a good team member. Say that to yourself. I'm a good team member. I know how to collaborate with people. I know how to relate to people. I'm a good team member. Say that to yourself. People enjoy me when they meet with me. Say that to yourself. People enjoy me when they meet with me. Say that to yourself. Always say this. I will have good relationship with people. I will have lasting relationship with people. Say that to yourself. I always hear from God. Say that to yourself. I'm a giver. I'm an aggressive giver. Say that to yourself. The grace of giving is upon me. Say that to yourself. The grace of giving is upon me. Say that to yourself. Say this to yourself. I'm always receiving money. I'm always receiving increase. I'm always receiving favor. I always have favor in business. I always have favor in ministry. I always have favor with my boss. I always have favor with people. Say that. These are the things to say to yourself. My energy is always high. Come on. My energy is always high. My energy is always high. I'm always at a high performance level. I'm always at a high performance level. I'm always radiating with joy. I'm always radiating with joy. There is no dull moment around me. I'm always radiating with joy. I am full of peace. I am full of peace. I am full of joy. I'm the distributing center of joy. Ooh, if people need joy, they come to me, they will contact it. Mm, I will infect them with joy. Come on. Mm, 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 mm. They, will, they will just get it. They will be joy positive. If you relate with me, you are going to be joy positive. You are going to be Holy Ghost positive. Ooh, <laughs> if you relate with me, you are going to be anointing positive. Yes, those are the kind of words. You got to speak to yourself every day. Wake up and say to yourself, I'm beautiful. I'm looking good. <laughs> Come on, say that. Don't wait for your husband to do that. Come on, do that for yourself. Do it for yourself. This is an investment you're giving into your life. I'm a beautiful woman. I'm a beautiful woman. My hairs are good. Come on, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, my hairs are good. Say that to yourself. You're a guy, you just take, maybe you have this kind of my comb, you just like this. Oh God, my hairs are good. I'm looking good. I'm looking good. You have to speak to yourself. Nobody will do it for you. Sometimes you're expecting people to admire you. They are dealing with all their problems. So you do it for yourself. You talk to yourself. You learn to appreciate yourself. You learn to... In Africa, we have this adage that when the lizard climbs from the, uh, from the top and falls down, you know, lizard will always do like this. In Africa, we say the lizard is appreciating himself. I've done well. I've done well. I've done well. <laughs> the lizard, when it comes down from the floor and it falls, you know, that's what Lizard does. He was shaking his head. And then Lizard said, I've done well. I've done well. I've done well. So when you're going out this morning, dress with some class, look at yourself in the mirror, and say, I'm good for the day. I am blessed. Please, this year is the year to speak life to yourself and not death. Don't compound the problem by damaging your image, by damaging your esteem, by damaging yourself. It doesn't help you. It doesn't mean that you're a good person. Don't do that to yourself. Always encourage yourself. The Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. If you can encourage yourself, who do you think God will use you to encourage? You cannot encourage someone when you are in a bad emotional state. So this is why this meeting is going on. Get to encourage yourself today. Learn to love 
learn to care. Just take it one day at a time and learn to rejoice. One of the things that kept me as a happy person, people used to say, person, you're always a happy person. You're always a glad person. You know, my wife was telling me that. You're always a happy person. You're always a glad person. I said, because I choose to. I choose to. If I look at the bills I have to pay, the things I have to do in ministry, the building we're doing things, I'll be depressed. I'll call me and be crying to you. But that is not who I am. I am the righteousness of God. I don't focus on my bills. I focus on Jesus. My inspiration is Jehovah Jireh. El Shaddai is my source. Speak life to yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone that is watching this broadcast today. I speak life over these precious and holy people. I pray for everyone watching me today that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon you. I rebuke the spirit of depression, suicide, and condemnation, and guilt. I speak love to you. I speak love to you right now. I speak increase to you. I speak wisdom to you. I speak hope to you. Let the love of God saturate your mind. I rebuke every spirit of depression suicidal thought, thought of homelessness, thought of frustration, thought of losses. I rebuke those thoughts in the name of Jesus. I speak peace over your mind, over your soul, over your journey. I speak rest over your soul in the name of Jesus. I bind every evil spirit that may try to rise against your dream and vision. In the name of Jesus, I speak hope to your, to your marriage, to your children. Whatever that is a problem before you, I stand in faith with you and I rebuke the storm in the name of Jesus. I speak strength in your body. Receive energy, receive wisdom, receive direction, receive increase, receive unction, receive revelation knowledge, receive strength, receive hope. May your hope be restored. May the years you lost be restored in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we're prayed. And amen, and amen, and amen. Wow, what a wonderful day today. Glory be to God. What can't remember this time? Not even me. So I want to encourage you to be back tomorrow. I'd like you to share the flyer with someone. Tell a friend about Prophetic Insight. We'll have tomorrow to do, and we have a, a Friday to do. Those are the two days we'll have to do. I want to encourage you to partner with this ministry as the Spirit of God will lead you. Whatever the Holy Ghost will lead you to give today, we'll appreciate it. And we'll pray that the blessing will rest upon you. Your partnership will help in spreading the word of God, reaching one more people every day around the world. As I preach the gospel, there are partners who are supporting me, who are encouraging me. Apostle, you got to keep doing this. Apostle, you got to keep preaching. So your partnership has encouraged me so much. I want to say a very big thank you to everyone on this broadcast. We're doing it together. You know, imagine me having all of these words and nobody will support for me to get an airtime for we to pay for this Zoom that we're using or the things we're using, the, the ministry won't be able to go that far. But your partnership has always encouraged me to just keep preaching, to just keep reaching to more and more people. And together we're doing it. You know, Jesus, uh, Paul was writing, he said, Paul planted, Apollos watered. He said, God gave the increase. He said, teamwork. It's not a two-person thing. It's a three-person thing. It is you and me and God. And together, this harvest is spreading. Look at the message you had right now. A lot of people are free. They are released. They are peaceful right now because the word of God came. Imagine that we're not able to carry on with this broadcast and reach out. Some people may be looking for where to find good word that will minister to them. So your partnership is helping me to reach out to more and more people. Let's do it together this year. Let's be among those that will change the lives of people and transform the destinies of people. So we're encouraging you today to consider partnering. Whatever the Spirit of God will lay in your heart to sow, to support the preaching of the gospel will go a long way to touch more lives. So today, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for everyone that will be partnering with this ministry, that you meet their needs supernaturally, you open doors for them, you cause them to flourish, you cause them to prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. You meet their needs supernaturally in Jesus' mighty name. We're prayed, Amen. You can send your partnership to finishworktv.com and slash giving. Finishworktv.com and slash giving. You can give from there, or you can go to PayPal, is faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Is 
on PayPal is faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Thank you for being part of this live transforming prophetic insight broadcast. I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. Until my next broadcast, don't forget this. There is greatness in you and Jesus is coming soon. Bye-bye and have a wonderful day today. Thank you, everyone. Thank